this is just start with uh, linebackers, and everybody wants to know about Will because that seems like it's sure. a battle. Yep. So how's that going? It's going good. Uh, it is a battle. We've got multiple guys competing for the position right now. Obviously, um, through graduation, that position's open. Um, kind of carried over from spring ball, some of the same faces, um, but it's really an open job. Uh, mixing and matching those groups, uh, going against the ones, the twos, and the threes, and, and every day is a little bit different um, package as far as who's going with which groups. Preparing them for basically tomorrow night when we scrimmage um, and giving them, obviously, we, we've had a lot of live opportunities to get evaluations, but kind of gearing everything towards the second week where we have to start making some decisions. We're giving them an opportunity to learn it and, and to do it. But um, we are cross-training guys and giving multiple guys opportunities. Um, and we're going to kind of see kind of how they rank one, two, three, four, and five. And that's how we're going to approach it. And, and they understand that. And they're working hard. Give us a look at Jaito and, and Trey. What do yeah. they do? Um, Jairo and Trey played you know, in the spring uh, at the position, uh, kind of went back and forth with that. Gyro, you know, making the transition from defensive back to, to outside linebacker uh, to now playing our will. Um, you know, he's about a year and a half into it, really made progress last year, live action and teams, which we talked about on special teams. Um, brings a great element in coverage, understanding, because he's just done that more uh, and has really progressed in the run game as well. And then, you know, the thing I can't understate uh, or can't overstate is what Mike Joseph and his staff, and I say that every year over with you guys, but this is by far the most improvement we've seen size-wise. You look at a guy like Jairo now who's 221, 222 pounds, uh, who played at 214 pounds last year. He put on seven pounds of muscle and gained speed. Um, you know, uh, uh, Trey Lathan, Travis Lathan sitting there at 226 pounds. Uh, he's almost 11 pounds bigger than he played last year and faster. Um, so the, him and his staff, Coach Mike Joseph and his staff, did a phenomenal job getting those guys ready. Uh, so Gyro's using that, and you can see that on film. He's playing bigger um, and still still progressing. And then Trey, you know, we were able to redshirt Trey last year. He played in four games, played some meaningful snaps in those games. Um, you know, he's a product of our development program with our Monday night football and, and Sunday night football that we do. And you could see the progress coming and, and to play the snaps that he played in the Oklahoma State game and then go through a spring and then carry that momentum into the summer. Uh, you can see that. I had a nice play yesterday. We had a third and two and, and he ran through a gap and, and made a nice tackle for loss. And it was good to see him pull his pin right there. And he's doing that more and more and more every day. So excited about where they're coming and, you know, we're putting them in, in, in those situations, pressure situations. and. They're gonna they're gonna continue to, to progress. Decision making, uh, playmaking, technique. What am I missing there? What what needs? What are those qualities that you're looking for for the guy that's gonna start? Yeah, it's all of the above, but above everything else is gonna be effort and physicality. Effort and physicality is gonna be what decides it. We gotta have guys that play within the defense. We talk about one eleventh constantly in that. Uh, not to be cliche, but they gotta do their job. But at the end of the day, if they're not playing physical and they're not playing with a relentless effort, they're not going to play. And so that's that's number one. Uh, and then if the ball's to me, did I make the player, did I not? Every day we make a point of attack grade tape. So, you know, you don't just get credit for being on the backside of the play. And, and I was there. I didn't mess anything up, but I did my job. No. Did you make the play when you're at the point of attack? Did you force the ball to the correct place at the point of attack? Did you spill the ball? Where you should have spilled it at the point of attack, and did you did you make the tackle? You know, and we got obviously we got to be able to make tackles at the position. So, uh, effort and physicality, and then and then production. Just how well they, they complement what Lee does play into it well. Just because you know he's going to be such a big part of. of yeah, um, not necessarily as far as a compliment. Um, you know, we want we want two productive inside linebackers that can run and hit and do those things. Um, there's a communication part to this pre-snap. Uh, that's huge that Lee has taken, um, you know, kind of by command being the Mike linebacker. Uh, and yeah, we want somebody that can echo those calls and be right there next to him to make those calls. But um, at the end of the day, we, you know, he's in his alignment. We got to have another guy in his alignment doing the 111th and playing physical and fast and, you know, competing. Yeah, it's like Coach Brown said. Um, they've they've both kind of solidified their spot in the competition. Um, they're doing really well. I think they're seeing it. Um, they can both run. Uh, they both have played at a high level. Um, so I'm excited to see. Again, we're going to put them in some more pressure situations here in the next four or five days um, where it's not just look teams. It's not just kind of 
teach tempo. It's it's you know we got guys coming down on kickoff team that are that are on the depth chart, and and we got to make blocks, and we got to make those guys miss that are going to play in games. So we're going to continue to evaluate them. But I'm really really excited about both of them and what they bring. Obviously, it was part of the evaluation process. They're both here because they had those skills alongside of their receiver and DB skills. So um, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see where they're going to go in the next week. I guess who are those candidates being? Are you doing that for the purpose of depth or maybe to find a starter? All of the above. Yeah, we're going to have depth. I'm, I'm going to have as many as six guys traveling this year at inside linebacker, which I've never had since I've been here with the combination of special teams and being in the two deep or three deep at linebacker. So, uh, and then you add on top of that different sub, subgroups, you know, whether we're in a one, one linebacker set, a two linebacker set, a three linebacker set, depending on what the offense is in. So we're going to have more flexibility. So it's one of those deals. Yeah, there is a competition for a starter, but I've got more able bodies and more able experience that can play than I've ever had in the room. Uh, so, you know, you talk about Jairo, you talk about Trey Lathan, talk about Tariq Austin Cave, um, Caden Beiser, who's, who's in his third year, um, you know, and, and has made a lot of uh, headway and is a big time contributor on teams uh, as a core player. And then Ben Carter as a true freshman, been here since January and can run, can hit, is smart uh, and has made plays. So, I mean, we've got all, all realms of ages and, and things. And um, with, with, again, with everybody increasing their size, I mean, look at a guy like Ben Cutter who got here at 212, is 227 pounds right now. And uh, I mean, the guys are all big enough and fast enough and strong enough to play. Now it's a matter of going back to what we talked about earlier. Who's gonna play the hardest, who's gonna be the most physical, and who's gonna you know, be able to produce at the end of the play. And some of the special team stuff we saw today, did something that you and Neil were very pleased with know, some punts, some kicks, some snaps, things like that. Um, Fair. Okay. I was going to ask you. Like, <laughs> I was going to ask you uh, your evaluation, but yeah. maybe kind of what we see is what we got there. Yeah. Excuse me. So on the kickoff return, we had. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to get a kick that we can return. Um, the good thing is, is that we're, hit, we're we are hitting more touchbacks, so we're trying to get the drill done. Well, we have a, obviously we have a rule for our returners, uh, so we didn't get as many reps in that period as we wanted to get, just because we were we are asking that guy to put the ball in a in a small area, and he, he wasn't really able to do that during that drill. So that was some of that frustration, um, and then you know. Uh, the punters right now, you know, our locations, you know, have been have been really, really good. Um, you know, Ali has continued to really be good in his pooch situations. You know, we only had two touchbacks all of last year, one which wasn't his fault, uh, which is a much improved area for us. And he's been steady with that uh, for the most part. And then uh, and, and I'll tell you what, you know, Leighton Bechtel uh, as the number two punter right now has, has really gotten a hold of some balls the last couple of days. It's, it's really fun to watch his improvement, too. And again, some of that goes back to. Mike Joseph and his staff, but he's coming along as well. So um, I will tell you that was it, that that's the first time this camp where there's been some frustration. I, I will say that uh, we've been pretty pleased uh, for the most part. Uh, but like anything else, we got to continue to progress. People mentioned I think it was yesterday, the other day about being a fair catch punt team. What is a good fair catch percentage that you're shooting for? Yeah, um, we. I would love to be over 60%. Um, I think that's a that's an attainable goal. We were close to that. Um, the thing that the thing that Ollie does is is he puts so many different spins on the ball, and his ball is very difficult to catch. If you go back to last year, there was a lot of guys that caught his ball as they were falling down because they can't judge it, and that's that's a part of the Aussie part of that. Um, but um, you know, we want those fair catches. But they got to have the hang time. And, and people think about it, well, we want to get 50-yarder, 50-yarder, 50-yarder. Well, you can hit 50-yarder, but it has 3-8 hang time. Well, they've got plenty of time to catch that and return it. Where he was really good last year, you know, we had the 40, I think it was 41 or 42 net. I think it was a 41 net, but he had a 4-0 four, four or more hang time. Like, you can't return that. There's, there's going to be somebody in your face. So we want to lead the country in fair catches while we get that net punt more in that 42, 43, which will, which will put us top five in the country. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. It's, it's, it's excellent. Yeah, obviously that's something we're trying to build on. We're trying to build on, and and, um, and the guys have taken ownership in that, and, and that, that was one of our strengths for some of the things that we've got to really get improved on. That's one of our strengths, and punt coverage defense um, has been a strength pretty consistently. You mentioned uh, the scrimmage in terms of the world linebacker. How much does the scrimmage matter for special teams? Uh, a lot, yeah. I mean, we're, now in this, in this one, we're going to be able to put some guys where it's uh, the first – for instance, first punt, and then we'll, again, on the opposite side, rather than have young look guys that are kind of giving us a look to teach progressions and protections and things like that, we're going to put 
some of our pump block guys out there. And now they're going to block and they have to protect against our guys that are rolling. And they're going to have to hold up against or, or cover the punt against guys that are trained in boxing out and locking out and using those techniques into the down. So we'll get an accurate evaluation for the returners, but also our punt coverage team and our punt protection team. Now take that across all our units kickoff versus kickoff return, kickoff return versus our kickoff. So this scrimmage will be huge for our evaluation for a lot of guys. And we're going to put some young guys that have shown up, not just since they got here in January, but even this summer. And uh, whether they're transfers, high school kids, um, these are the situations that we can put them in. You know, on the other side of that too, and, and you, I've, heard, I've talked about it before and it, with y'all, is these uh, competitions. You know, we don't necessarily do the amount of competitions that we do in the spring, which are more of the drill work in an isolated kind of controlled setting to kind of see the guys who can compete against really good competition. Now it's, we'll do some of those competitions, but now we've got to be able to see them do it in 11 on 11. And can he fit off the guy next to him and, and you know, make a game time, game second decision, you know, in a live setting. So, and then you put it in the stadium and, you know, add, add that pressure to it and kind of see how they react. For the guys that are playing? Yeah. Yeah. Playing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's something that um, from Coach Brown to the coordinators down to the position coaches, that's something that we'll meet on constantly. And the guys will understand kind of our mentality on that. Um, everybody's fair game on special teams. It's a matter of what maximizes their reps during that game. And, and are we using the best – are we making the best of, at use out of those reps – each and every game. And if a guy's playing, what does his reps look like on offense or defense? Where has he been able to contribute on special teams? Is he a one unit guy? Is he a two unit guy? Is he a 50-50 guy on a unit where we got him with another starter and they're kind of going half and half? All those things are constantly being evaluated on a daily basis and, and communicated to the player so that they understand that. So it's like a natural progression. You want to get on the bus, and then once you're on the bus, you want to become a starter. And once you become a starter, how can you maximize your, your productivity for that game? And we're doing that through all three phases. Do you ever have a guy that was a starter or a heavy workload guy, but for whatever reason they were just so good at it, didn't get tired, they could be on three? Um, three is probably a bit much. Two is usually the limit. Two is usually the limit. Along those lines, um, the bulk of your coverage guys are corners, safeties, linebackers. Mm -hmm. Do you have any offensive guys that, you know, obviously because they can tackle. Do you have any of those offensive guys that have that ability? Yeah, and, and there's a couple. That there is. There's a couple that we've identified that, and we're going to put them in some of these uh, situations tomorrow. And uh, we have in, already in some of these competitions, and they've shown up. Uh, and then there's a couple of guys that, you know, they really didn't get an opportunity in competitions, and we're going to throw them out there and see if they can do it. At the end of the day, when it comes to offensive guys on cover units, obviously it's can they get the ball down. They just don't practice that as much as the other guys, even though we do practice it. I think you guys were out there today and you saw us. We're working tackling drills, and we, we do as good as anybody in the country, I think, of doing crossover where offensive guys are skilled in tackling and, and, and they understand how to do it and how to leverage the ball. Defensive guys with ball security and, you know, post-interception, post-takeaway. Uh, so they, they are trained, but just not as much. So we got to get them out there, kind of see. Uh, there is a mentality aspect to it, but but I do like there's a couple guys that have, have shown up and they've got that mentality. They want to they want to go down and they want to they want to get some, which is fun. Um, you know, well, let me let me let me get them. Let me let me see if they're going to get them first. All right. I'm not trying to dodge the question, but I also want to put them out there. And we, we got some more evaluation to do. Uh, I'm Michael Hayes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah, no, 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 yeah, Casey was phenomenal accuracy um, and, and did a great job for us. Um, been really, really happy with where Michael is right now with his accuracy. Obviously, he's got a big leg. Uh, he's got a strong leg. He's got a very fast leg. Um, he, uh, but he's been accurate. Um, he's been making those kicks. I know, I think Coach talked about it a couple of days ago, and uh, he's continued to do that. Uh, hit another really good one today, uh, one or two, excuse me. Um, so very, very pleased with where Michael is. He does have big shoes to fill, but he hasn't blinked, and, and he's done a great job to this point. At a competition for a specialist, how, how do they kind of push each other? You know, we talk about quarterbacks, they push each other. How do the kickers kind of push each other? Oh, it's nonstop. 
it's nonstop. You got to think now too. And and when they're when they're not in a specialist period, when they're over there and they're doing their drill work and they're over there and um, again, and you guys are tired of hearing me talk about it, but they're over there on the track man and they're they're comparing their leg speed and their their ball strike and their velocity and their rotations and and it's it's every kick and, and that's the good thing and they're just pushing each other constantly. So uh, it's a great room. Uh, him him Danny uh, Layton Ollie uh, all, all those guys uh, they, they they get after it and they understand the good thing is is that there's no gray in the numbers because of the technology I mean it is what it is you got you either make it you miss it and and you either uh, have the distance or you don't so you know they're, they're having fun getting after it and um, it, very low ego room very low ego room and fun to coach Neil has raved on Lee Toba a lot you know probably since last year but his, his yep. improvement this year yep. where do you see him um, Lee, Lee, number one, uh, in the meeting room, um, Lee is, is doing as good a job as anybody I've ever coached right now in the meeting room, asking questions, uh, taking notes and, and not just notes like I took in college, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Not, not paraphrasing. I mean, he's writing, he's writing paragraphs of information and, and, uh, it was funny. I, I gave him a hard time yesterday. I stole his notebook from him and I was reading it. And I was very happy to see it. It was it was verbatim things that I was saying, and and that that just shows growth in that part of it, in that area. So, um, and then you know the work that he's done with his flexibility, the work that he's done with his lateral movement, um, you know it, it shows. Uh, he he committed this summer to that, um, and he's going to continue to do so. So he's been steady. Um, he's definitely a leader. Uh, he has a voice, uh, and he loves to play. And people feed off his energy and and uh, um, how hard he how hard he plays. Absolutely. Just people are attracted to him. Yeah. He's a personality guy. Um, very rarely does he have a bad day, which people gravitate to that uh, when you're a positive person. And, um, you know, he, he does try to relate to everybody. Uh, I think everybody on our, on our team and on our defense uh, feels like they can, they can talk to him, they can relate to him. So um, he's, got that, he's got that for sure. How much do you keep Josiah Trotter engaged in uh, your room? Constantly. Constantly. You know, Josiah is in a situation right now as a freshman. Uh, obviously, he's not going to be able to play this year, uh, but he loves football so much. And he's in the meetings. Um, he's at the walkthroughs. He, he's doing his treatment, obviously, his rehab protocol. But uh, he's a guy that will come and we'll eat lunch, and then him and I will go watch film together uh, while the other guys are getting their recovery because, he, you know, obviously he's not in that position right now. But he'll come in and we'll watch film and kind of go through, make him go through the calls. He'll make the calls. He'll ask questions. Um, even though he's not playing, he still asks the most questions of anybody in the room. Um, and, and challenges in a positive way, you know. Um, so I'm really, really happy with what he's done at this point, staying aggressive with the game, not just with his rehab, but with the game. And, and that's going to be obviously something that's going to help him in the spring and coming back. Is that something you worry about with a young kid keeping him engaged? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, why did he come here? He came here to play football. He came here to play football and go to school. And um, you, you, you kind of get that taken away from you. Obviously, nobody wants that. Um, and, and, you know, he's in a situation where he was really the, kind of the only one. I mean, everyone else is probably going to have a chance to come back and, and do that this year and, and be able to have a chance to contribute. And he's kind of on his own little island right now. But he's not. He's, he's there. We're all with him. Uh, and, and he's done a great job of staying engaged and, and doing that. So, yeah, that, that is definitely a concern. But you know, he's, this is his family away from home and he knows that. And, um, we've all, we're all, you know, putting our arms around him and, and continuing to progress with him. Going back to, um, Beanie versus Polk, you mentioned talking to the coordinators of their coaches about which players contribute. I mean, one difference that jumps out is, and Neil's talked about, I mean, Beanie's going to be a, a major contributor on defense. And if not, you know, one of the top players on defense where this might be the, where how Polk that at all play into any decision making? Do you talk to their coaches and be like, do you want a guy like Beanie in this role since he might be, you know, a, a major factor to your defense? Should yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I think that kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier with the balance of. Con Con contributing on offense and defense and the ability to affect the game on special teams. Now you're talking about in return game. I mean, you got the ball in your hands for six to eight seconds and you're trying to go make something special happen. You know, there is a there is a collision port to that. Um, but, you know, you, you want to have guys that want that opportunity and uh, Beanie wants it. 
uh, Polk wants it. And so when it comes to returners, at the end of the day, we got to do better at kickoff return. We got to have productivity. We got to have better starting field position, which I know Coach Brown's talked about. And we're, you know, that's one of those positions where the best guy is going to do it. And, you know, we're going to, we're going to rely on that, you know, and then we'll figure out the rest of it after that. Yeah. I think on the roster he's listed as a long yeah. Is he doing all three? No, he's not. So he did last year. He did last year. We got a young guy, uh, McGuire Moss, who's in his redshirt freshman year, who's come on uh, as a as another snapper that's that's shown that he can handle it. So Layton's our full time uh, full time punter now. Um, so yeah, but last year, um, you know, that's that's kind of how it played out. We had signed a, a freshman, uh, McGuire, wasn't quite ready yet. Layton picked it up and learned it, uh, which kudos to him and did a great job. And in several games last year, he was our backup snapper. So selfless guy, loves loves West Virginia, loves being a Mountaineer, and works his rear end off and really, really couldn't be prouder of them. So to see him kind of do that, go from punter, learn how to long snap and do a really good job with it and now be able to go back to punting full time and now see him progress in punting, which is what he wants to do, obviously, um, is has been really fun. It just shows you some of the character and the quality of guys that we've got on this team, and he's a great example of that. I gotta ask you this. I know he, you don't coach him, but he's on your defense. Uh, what's your thoughts on Aubrey Brooks? Aubrey, the thing that stands out about Aubrey right now through, what is this, day eight, I think, it's Groundhog Day. But um, through day eight, the guy has practiced his rear end off and he just can't get enough. Uh, coach Wright has to throw him off the field uh, to give him a break. Um, he talks, he understands, as he's still a young player, but he understands what we're trying to do, why we're trying to do it. Uh, I feel like every day he's got a takeaway uh, and and he's making plays. And you kind of see last year he, he was productive, but he wasn't necessarily making those those big time plays. And now it's like he's productive and he's making plays. You're like, oh, okay, yeah. He really starting to understand it. And it's not necessarily because he's – you know, the biggest, fastest kid is because he's he understands it at another level than he did and testament to Coach Dante Wright and, and what he's done with him. Um, but it's it's been fun to watch. And, again, it's been the energy and energizing for our defense. And your takeaways was the Achilles heel yeah. last year. Yeah. That's been a – I mean, that's been a, a big difference. This year, it's right? been a point of emphasis, yeah. obviously, for the entire defense from Jordan down. And, uh, you know, whether that's, you know, getting the ball out for takeaways or, or interceptions. And so we do. We make a big deal out of it. Uh, if you guys are out there and, and – or if y'all are out there and you see it, you're going to see a sideline. You're going to see coaches coming off the sideline. You're going to see – you're going to see energy because it's a big deal. And uh, it's been fun because there has been more. Cutters, high school tackle totals. <laughs> like 500 tackles or something like that. It's pretty crazy, isn't yeah. it? Oh, and it's yeah. not like small school football either. No, he won a 3A state championship, yeah. went 16-0, and 0, which is the second largest classification in North Carolina. Um, at the end of the day, ben, Ben's a Ben's a ball-chasing, ball-hawk guy, high energy. Um, he, he plays big. Um, he plays fast. Um, you know, he's learning the speed uh, of the college game. But for a young guy right now, I've been really happy with his – transition and how he's worked and learned um but yeah coming out of high school he's what you want i mean he's he's a he's a find the ball guy he did multiple things for his high school he played running back on top of that uh he was their punter uh faked a few punts for yardage so i mean he was a do all guy athlete that's big and, and physical so um you know really excited about what he's going to have an opportunity to contribute this year and uh you know and in the future be somewhere, I'm guessing, right? I mean, maybe he's not starting at will, but he could be on special teams. Yeah, I mean, he's he is right in the mix. He is right in the mix on multiple special teams and on defense. So, yeah, you probably won't talk a lot, a lot about the year, um, but he, was, he seems to be very good, Austin Brinkman. Mm -hmm. At long snapper, this is it shows my ignorance. No. How, how do you improve at long snapper? <laughs> yes. Well, you know, it, you're talking, and it's funny, and it's a great point you make. So everybody talks about location and velocity. How fast is the ball getting back there and where, where is he hitting? Well, the thing that he's done a great job of is, and, and you know, we, we're going to move Ollie around for the long snapping, you know, what he's able to do to lead Ollie. It's like a, it's like a quarterback leading a receiver on an out route, knowing that the defensive back is on the inside and he's got to lead into the sideline. It's no different. He knows where that punt's going and where he can 
put the ball in the hip pocket wherever Ali is going, and and to understand that is 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 really elite for him. Uh, his velocity is already at an elite level, uh, and his locations have been great. So that's really where now it's kind of even more so scheme wise as it is anything else. Uh, and then field goals, believe it or not, I mean there there's uh, the detail of rotations on the football so that the long the holder can get it where he doesn't have to spin it to put the laces out. Uh, an elite seven yard or eight yard long snapper uh, for field goals uh, can do that. And he can time the rotations, something that he's continuing to work on and continue to progress on. Uh, so it makes it even easier for the hold, which obviously makes the, the operation time for field goals even faster. So uh, he's, he's a stud. Uh, I love watching him work and it's fun watching him progress. Back to Stroll, can he truly punt with the other foot? Yeah, he can, he can do it all. It's just a matter of, you know, what we're, what we need that what we need that game and he's been able to do it all it's just a matter of what we what we want